It's strange to think of it now, that Scott Mitchell's Week 3 start at Texas Stadium in 1994 would be his only career start against the Dallas Cowboys, and would be the final meeting of the two franchises in Irving for a decade. It was Mitchell's third game with Detroit, after leaving Miami in the offseason. Mitchell had been regarded as something of a left-handed Dan Marino as a backup with the Dolphins. He was big, standing 6 feet 6 inches tall, weighed 240 pounds, and owned a strong arm. He had won four games in relief of Marino in 1993, and was viewed by some fans and sports writers in Detroit as the final piece that would get the Lions over the hump in the stacked NFC. Eventually, reality would convince them otherwise. Though nobody knew it at the time, Scott Mitchell was well on his way to cementing himself as one of the worst free agent signings in franchise history. He lacked mobility, accuracy, and vision. And, according to some, he was lacking in other areas as well. Doubleheader Sunday here on Fox NFL Sunday. Dallas at Buffalo, most of you will see. And of course, Chicago taking on the Lions in Pontiac, Michigan. Back inside as we get some thoughts on the late games. Ronnie. The Bears, I think their defense right now is playing great. Yes, we need Kramer to step up, but I think the Bears' defense will go out today. They'll shut down the receivers. I think another thing that I also like about the Bears, Mark Carrier says that what they're going to do is they're going to disguise their coverages. They're going to make Mitchell think. Mitchell think. <laughs> now, one of the things. But for one night, under the bright lights of a Monday night football stage, this South Paul gunslinger made all the plays that the defense of the world champion Cowboys could not, and seemed to be throwing his hat into the ring as one of the league's budding quarterbacking stars. The Cowboys entered the night riding a 10-game winning streak, dating back to Thanksgiving of the previous season, and were favored over Detroit by 13 and a half points. And when Dallas jumped out to a 7-0 first quarter lead, it looked like the romp was on. What followed after went down as one of the all-time anomalies in NFL history. The game will forever be remembered for the running back duel between Emmitt Smith and Barry Sanders. The two premier runners in the NFL put on a dazzling display combining for 386 yards, rushing and receiving. Novacek provides leverage on the left side, and moving that way is Emmett Smith, and he breaks it! Emmett, one man to beat, and the angle of Adam Jason Hansen would like to forget the game. This primetime showdown was the only game for the Detroit place kicker during the 1990s in which he missed three field goal attempts. That two of these misses were blocked by the same Cowboys player, Leon Lett, added another unorthodox layer to the evening's events. Troy Aikman was personally, and statistically, confronted by the unorthodox. Aikman completed 25 passes to backs and receivers against the Lions. However, it was one completion, to offensive guard Derek Kennard, that Aikman regretted the most. Keep in mind, the Cowboys have a rookie kicker in Bonio. It is deflected and it is caught by a lineman at the 38th. It's Derek Kennard, he loses the football and Pat Swilling has it. Does it get? Michael Johnson tipped it to start things. Canard wound up with it. He loses the football. Swilling gets it. But it was the arm of Scott Mitchell, not Troy Aikman, that was the difference maker on this night. Even after watching Mitchell complete less than 50% of his pass attempts, Dallas head coach Barry Switzer had to admit that the Detroit quarterback had, quote, played a great game. Switzer could say so, because Mitchell was there to deliver seemingly every time the Lions needed a big play on third down. Mitchell's third down strike to Brett Perryman for 14 yards moved the chains and led to a Jason Hansen field goal in the first quarter. Later in the third quarter, on third down from the Dallas 9-yard line, Mitchell found Herman Moore for a touchdown to put the Lions ahead by 10 points. That score was preceded by one of the biggest plays of the game, when Mitchell delivered a fourth down strike of 25 yards to Moore. In the sudden death overtime period, Mitchell did it again. Needing 13 yards from midfield, he connected with Guess who? Herman Moore for 17 yards to put Detroit in scoring range. All 13 of Mitchell's completions went to wide receivers, totaling 174 yards, and the Lions needed every bit of it. Hansen's 44-yard field goal in the final minute of overtime gave Detroit the 20-17 upset victory and gave Mitchell his first premier victory as an NFL starter. Where that magic was for Scott Mitchell before or after the Dallas game will forever be labeled as a pro football mystery. 
Out of the nine starts that Mitchell made in 1994 before landing on injured reserve, the game against Dallas was one of only two games in which he did not throw an interception, and was the only game that Detroit did not commit a turnover as a team. Mitchell's 93.7 rating against Dallas was the highest he posted in five road starts that season for Detroit. What was his next highest? A 56.2 rating two weeks later and a dreadful loss at Tampa Bay. Where, you ask, was the vaunted Dallas defense? That lauded Cowboy pass rush? Nowhere to be found, evidently. A Cowboys defensive line that totaled 13 combined sacks in the first two games of the season failed to reach the statuesque Mitchell even once. The only, quote, sack of the game for Dallas as a team came when linebacker Darren Smith ran Mitchell out of bounds for a one-yard loss in the first quarter. And what of Charles Haley and Leon Lett, you ask? The two best starting pass rushers for the Cowboys failed to even record a tackle during regulation. Lett did make a dent on the defensive stat sheet in overtime, stuffing Barry Sanders for a two-yard loss, but Haley was MIA from start to finish. It was enough to bury the Cowboys on this night, and was enough to give Scott Mitchell an ever-so-brief moment in the NFL spotlight.